This is the Mark Dolan Way. Top tips for mind, body and soul, some great life hacks and my favourite products of the week. This show is available on all podcast platforms or you can watch it. Just subscribe to the Mark Dolan Way on YouTube and join the Facebook group. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to the show. I hope you are very well. Um, lovely to have your company. Lots to get through today. And there's a special guest star in the show. And it is a cat that has been visiting our house. And uh, it's called Hermione. Do you want to meet Hermione? I don't know if she'll allow um, herself to be met. She's just chasing around at the moment in this room. But I will uh, reveal her at just a moment. Then I will introduce you to my actual cat, Harry. I can't believe that the cats haven't featured in a more visible way over previous weeks. I hope you've had an excellent week, by the way. And lots to get through. First of all, a quick one, which is that I was going to maybe watch something. So I've just come back from work. I was going to watch something with my son. And he said, you know what? I don't really feel like it. He just wants to relax. He's had a busy week and there's two things there. First of all, I congratulated him on listening to his body and listening to his heart and just deciding that actually it would be better for him not to watch anything and to just chill, as a young person would say. Uh, but also when he said we were not going to watch that he didn't know if he fancied watching something, I said, yeah, sure, no problem, no problem at all. And this is a big thing, um, very often, with friends, with family members, if something's been arranged, if there's a plan and the plan doesn't happen, the person can be very disappointed and it's very uncomfortable, the whole thing. So I'm really good at a thing, which is if someone cancels on me, if someone changes their mind about something, as a general rule, I go, no problem. No problem at all. It's cool. Don't worry about it. Let's do it again soon. Just let it go. And it's really nice for the person that's cancelled the plan and they've cancelled the plan because they're not feeling it or it's not practical. They don't fancy it. It's not uh, convenient now. Plans have changed. Things change and you go with the flow. So, yeah. So if people if, I, if I've got like, I don't know, let's say a lunch planned or a dinner. I got I got a text the other day from this guy uh, who I was going to meet. Really nice guy. And um, he said, oh, I've, uh, something's come up. I can't I can't see you tomorrow for lunch. I'm like, no worries, let's do it soon. Let me know when's good. Rather than just, I had a friend at school, very nice person. But if you cancel the plan, oh, here's the cat. Hello, Hermione. Right, so this is a great opportunity for you to meet the cat. Whoops. If you're watching on YouTube, oh, by the way, if this doesn't get you watching on YouTube, nothing will. So... If you're only listening, you cannot see this lovely cat, which is not my cat. It's a cat that visits our home regularly, brackets every day, and is slowly getting to know our actual cat, Harry. But there she is. So that's Hermione, and that's a reward for anybody watching on YouTube. She's very clumsy. She walks into things. She makes things fall. Look, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to make you comfortable, right? You stay there. Good, that's it. So now she can just relax. Very good. She'll be happy with that. I can stroke her while I do this. The cat is now out of shot, which is how it should be. Hello. Anyway, right, look, professional. So yeah, um, if, if, if things change, if plans change, just, uh, just say, yeah, no problem, not a problem. It, people will really appreciate that. We've talked about it before, haven't we, about getting fired. You get fired, right? If you know that you're not going to keep your job, if you're getting fired and you're not going to get unfired, then the smart thing to do is to accept that you've been fired and just say, yeah, sure, no problem. Listen, I completely understand. And it's been really fun. I've really enjoyed my time here. The boss will not believe. It's like, oh my God, did you see how, how well Stephanie handled being fired? How well she handled being fired. So, So that's very good. Now, um, then I want to talk to you about the value in things that you throw away. So everything has got this upcycle value. Upcycle means you take something that's defunct and no longer needed and use it for something else. 
So I remember telling you a while ago about a piece of furniture, disgusting sort of 1970s piece of furniture when we moved here, like a dressing table type thing, horrible, it had to be ripped out, had to be thrown away. But it, it was this sort of single dressing unit. So you've got like, I don't know, a sort of desk that you sit at and then there's a mirror in front of it. And then you've got the sort of wardrobe built around it and it's unfeasible device. And I hacked it up. I had to basically take an axe to it and just it, it wasn't, you know, it's not like the golden era of Ikea where you could unscrew it bit by bit. You actually had to, um, you know, it was sort of glued together. God knows how it was put together, but not self-assembly. And so I dismantled it, but I really liked the mirror. I thought the mirror was lovely. You know I'm obsessed with mirrors and collect old mirrors, if I see mirrors on the street. And that was lovely. And so that, I used that, I put that in the bathroom, became a lovely big bathroom mirror. So that a little bit of that awful piece of furniture lived on and I'd managed to eke out some small amount of value from it, which was brilliant. Well, I've got another example today of upcycling. So I'm a big fan of Sorrel boots, S-O-R-E-L. I remember telling you, telling you about them before Christmas and saying that everybody needs a pair of hiking boots. And they do. But anyway, my Sorrels which are these very, very warm boots. They're completely sort of waterproof on the outside and then they contain an inner shell. So you've got this kind of rubber um, canvas outer, outer boot, the main boot, which is the sole and then a sort of rubber thing and then canvas with laces or whatever. So that's the outer part of the boot. And then it has an internal sort of sock, which again, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm just gonna show you, but I can describe it if you're listening. And it is a woolly, it's like a woolen boot. It's just like a boot and it's woolen. And it's only designed for inside the sorrel boot. But the outside of the sorrel boot, the shell is completely worn out, basically. It's actually kind of cracked and lets water in. So I have recycled, and got rid of the outer because it has no value now. But I've kept the lovely inner woolen boot. There's this great wool, which is basically boiled wool, because if you boil wool, it makes it thicker and warmer. It shrinks and becomes more dense. And there's a lovely Austrian, or is it German, slipper company called Gieswein, who make slippers out of boiled wool. I think Hermione wants to go. So I'm going to open the door and let her out because there's nothing worse than keeping a cat in a room against their will. And this thing is grey and it's very warm and it's very comfortable and it's now just a house slipper was previously part of hiking boots and now it's a house slipper and I love it. So think twice before you throw, throw things away and if you are throwing it away, see which bit of it you can reclaim and upcycle and reinvent. It's a wonderful thing. It's just very satisfying. It's a very enjoyable thing to do. And I actually think they look pretty damn good, these sorrel inner boots. Part of me was tempted, because obviously it's the perfect slipper now for winter. Part of me was tempted to maybe put some gaffer tape on, on, the, on the sole of it or some pads or something. And, and it means I could actually like step outside, like take the bins out when I'm wearing it. I thought it might prolong the life of it. So I'm, I'm considering putting some sort of sole on it, which then can just be worn all the time. Not like going down to the shops, but just when you, you know, when you step out of your home onto the street to greet the postman or pick up a package or something, it's not a bad shout. Anyway, there you go. Other things I've done. I mean, my, my, um, my wife is very good at, um, sort of like old t-shirts and stuff. She uses them as rags. I know that's, that's obvious, but it is, it is pretty good. It's 
you know, you, if you've got, you know, you need some sort of cloth for the window, for cleaning windows and cleaning the kitchen floor, just old unwanted t-shirts, bit of a no-brainer, ripped jeans, cut them up, make them little rags, it's not a bad shout. Um, it says here, take plug. Oh yes, if you're discarding an electronic device, why don't you remove the plug and keep the plug at least so that you've got that? It's handy to have spare plugs, isn't it? And then get rid of the device. There's so many things you can do. Uh, so there you go, that's that. Um, power through these. Where did I hear this? Where did I hear? Oh, yes. I heard a guy called Chris Williamson, who has a very popular podcast, very talented and articulate guy. And he had featured on someone else's podcast. And he said that, I think it was his father said to him, or he'd heard from somewhere, that all you need is a modicum of talent and a lot of hard work and you'll be successful. Because everyone else is rubbish and it doesn't take much actually to give yourself the edge. And I don't know why, but when I heard it, the penny really dropped and I thought, yeah, I want to talk to you guys about that. Because I know that what he may have said there is is pretty damn obvious. Well, it is, isn't it? But it reminds me of when I was working with a comedian. When I was at uni, I did an improvised comedy show called Theatre Sports. And you would get comedy suggestions from the audience and then you would make up these scenes in front of the audience for laughs. And when I started to do it, I just thought, oh my God, this is going to make my brain explode. This is the hardest thing in the world. But this guy that had been doing it a while said to me, no, it's easy. It's the easiest thing in the world. He said, stand up's really hard at the improv. It's the world's easiest thing. And it was great because it kind of unlocked something in my head. We say, it's easy, is it? Okay. And then, and somehow it lifted that burden of expectation. And I thought, okay, well, I'll take his word for it. He's not saying that just for the sake of it. And he meant it. Now, listen, I had to do quite a lot of improv and I had to practice a lot and I had to develop the skill set. But once I had put the hours in and learned the craft, it was easy and it is easy because you do just say the first thing that comes into your head and it's very liberating. It's like it is improv. It's like jazz or something. You know, it's a wonderful thing. And he was right. But I was overwhelmed. It seemed like the hardest thing in the world when I started. But in fact, it's easy. And these books that I've been recommending for people addicted to smoking. There's a book called The Easy Way to Stop Smoking. There's also one, The Easy Way to Stop Drinking. The Easy Way to Give Up Being Addicted to Your Phone. There's one for sugar. It's called The Easy Way. That's the brand. Alan Carr is the man who's no longer alive. He's a kind of smoking guru about how to give up. And they've got a brilliant... Uh, business now and they publish books under the easy way brand and they've got clinics and everything and it's interesting because it's called easy way because the easy way to stop smoking you think well that is just misleading isn't it but it's not because his method makes giving up smoking and other addiction easy and I think that a lot of the time we hold ourselves back and you hold yourself back by thinking stuff is so hard and actually, that's not the way to go into it. That's not the mindset. You listen to Chris Williamson. It's like you just need a bit of talent and a bit of hard work and you you will be successful. And actually, really, success, it is like gravity. It's an inalienable force. If you work hard and you've got some talent, it's a fact that you will succeed. It's actually impossible that you won't. So in that sense, success is easy. Just try a bit harder than everyone else. And there's this assumption of talent. Well, that's because everybody's got talent. So I'm not worried about how much talent you've got. And even if you don't have enough, you'll make up for it with effort. It's completely overrated. Thierry Henry talked about the myth of genius. It's, like it's not genius, it's just practice. Gary Player, the golfer. The more I practice, the luckier I get. All right? That's like a one-liner joke and it's also a truism. So whatever it is you're thinking of embarking on, I don't want you to be burdened by how hard it's going to be. Just actually just think it's easy. I'll just, I'll just give it a go. It's going to be fine. It's easy. Let's do it. 
you've just got to be a bit naive about things and a bit optimistic. And don't be so focused on, like when you climb a mountain, you don't look at the whole mountain and try to process getting to the top. You just, it's one step at a time, isn't it? Upwards and then give it seven hours and you've, at, you've reached the top. And you'd be like, I can't believe I made it to the top. But it's because you didn't get bogged down in thinking how hard it was going to be. And, you know, it's easy. So whatever you're worried about, it's easy. Making money, finding love, being successful at work, being happy, contentment, home of your dreams. It's easy. Yeah, just, just do the basics and it will happen. It's a positive message, isn't it? You're welcome. Of course, it's not always going to be easy. And, and it is hard. And, and we know a big theme of this show, a podcast, is very much that life is difficult. Absolutely. But um, at the same time, you shouldn't go into things. Remember when I said reality is overrated? You shouldn't go into things just burdened with all of the statistics about how unlikely you are to succeed. Treat life like a lottery ticket, okay? When you buy a lottery ticket, the odds are pathetically low. But it's an act of optimism, isn't it? And there's a tiny chance that you'll win. Well, you need to do that in all aspects of your life. So go and look for that new job. The chance of getting that new job is very low. But I used to interview Hollywood celebrities for my movie show on Sky Movies called 35 Mil. And I remember a couple of producers, one producer used to get really irritated by the, the actors and the stars because they were so pampered and so spoiled and so rich. And of course, it's, you know, it is enough to make one a little envious. But I just thought to myself, well, if that's what, if you'd like to have that, if you'd like to be treated like Matt Damon or Julia Roberts or Steven Spielberg, well, then just go and be an actor, go to acting school. And go and audition for a play and just get on with it. And then you can be Matt Damon or Julia Roberts or Steven Spielberg. Just go and do it. You know? Let's talk about Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi, a wonderful man who was responsible for the independence of India. And he was a wise and spiritual chap. And he said... Stand up for what you think is right, fearlessly or without fear. So in life, if there's stuff that you just think is important and matters, and it's the truth, and it's authentic, and it's what you're about, and it's your belief, your passionate, held belief, strong gut instinct that something is right, then stand up for it fearlessly and without compromise don't fold because I find what happens is that if something doesn't seem right and you stand your ground you'll be proved right I think with some of the crazy stuff that's going on in the world I've expressed some strong heartfelt views about things over the years and I find that a lot of it brackets all of it feels like it's aging quite well I'm not ashamed of anything that I've stood up for in the past because it seems to be aging okay. So, but the thing is, I could be right. I could be wrong when I make pronouncements about things. And so could you. But when you've got the facts at your disposal and your instincts as a human being, which has evolved over many millennia as a species, then listen to that gut instinct, listen to your principles and stand by them and be consistent. Because that's the other thing, you know, your reputation is, is everything. So you might as well be true to yourself and to your values. And if it rubs people up the wrong way or if it surprises people, it doesn't matter. It's you. I've sometimes said and done things which surprise people. And they're like, Mark, you've changed or what's happened to you? Or is this you? Or has someone made you do these things or say these things? You know, my job as a broadcaster is to have strong opinions about stuff. And it's like, no, I just I, I, I read what's going on. And then I express my view. So I gather information, then I, it all sort of gets mashed up inside my head. And then I churn out my answer, my view, which is going to be different to everyone else's answer and everyone else's view. But I'm paid to have a view. Um, but all of it comes from me and it's part of who I am. 
And so the person that they think I've become, well, there's no becoming. It's just, this is um, how I'm reacting to the current situation based upon my soul and my character and my education and my upbringing and my values and my principles and this funny little brain of mine. Nothing's changed at all. It's just, this is, this is the filter through which I see the world. It's me. And I think that that's a really good thing for you to do. Don't doubt your own instincts and your own principles and your own own values and don't junk them and chuck them out the window and say, I'll take this position, which I don't really believe, but I feel like I should. You know, if it doesn't feel, I'm sorry, I'm being very vague, I know, but if it doesn't feel right, then it isn't right. Maybe you're at work and the company's taking a certain direction. Who knows, they're bending the rules a bit or breaking the law or... Don't know, there's behaviour in the office that's not right. Don't go along with it. Uh, Maybe you need to remove yourself from that company because you're like, I don't like the culture of this place. And I'm better than this and it doesn't fit with, with what I stand for anymore. I think you can do that because I think it will serve you well in life. And the other thing, by the way, I was going to say is, I hope I've, have I explained that well enough? I hope I have. Just think in your, in your, in your relationships, your marriage, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your kids, just be true to what you're about. And if something happens that goes against what you're about, then stand up for that and say, no, this isn't how we do it. This is not how I do it. Not on my watch what you've done there, what you've just said, how you've treated that person. It's not how I do it. Now, if it's work, you've got to be smart because you can't just keep quitting all the time because you don't like what's happening. So you need to obviously swallow it sometimes because it's practical. We've got bills to pay. You can't be a hero or a martyr. That's true. But you can kind of log what's happening and think, yeah, this is, you know, this doesn't, doesn't feel right. It doesn't sit with me. And when I have the opportunity to move on or to change the situation, I will. So let's imagine there's some colleague at work and they just treat staff in a certain way, which is so wrong and you, ugh. Well, don't, don't get sucked into that and then start also doing what that awful colleague is doing and become like them just because you're afraid and we're all pack animals and you want to blend in. Don't do it because the most valuable thing you have is your reputation. Uh, Speaking of which, um, with regards to the reputation, I had a good one. Oh, yeah. Really simple one, by the way. A colleague, lovely colleague at work recently confided in me, like with some really, really strongly personal information. And in my head, I saw that person again about a week later and they were so freaked out because they were worried I'd told someone. And I said, do you not worry? I am, if someone tells me something, that is it. It is in the vault. It's in, it's in Fort Knox. It's in Alcatraz. It is locked away and it will not be revealed. Your secret is safe with me. It's so valuable for people to be able to trust you and to know that when they tell you something, it goes no further. I mean, of course, if they sort of tell you gossip, you know, gossip is is, is is kind of fun, like shared, isn't it? Like pizza. It's nice to share it. But that's fine. If someone says, oh, have you heard about, have you heard about um, Jimmy? Have you heard about Jimmy and Amanda in sales? Oh my God. And there's a difference between someone will say, uh, don't tell anyone, but, and then there's other gossip that you can just share around. If someone has told you in confidence something, then it is extraordinarily important that you keep it in confidence because then they will trust you and that trust is absolutely priceless. And it's just unfair on them because if you then share that personal information, which is confidential with someone else, you you may influence the outcome for the person that told you in the first place. Things might change for them because you've told so-and-so. Now that so-and-so now, then the other person's not happy and it's all kicked off. So you're playing with fire, really. What was there some line during the war? I forgot what it was, but it was like loose tongues cost lives. 
It was the idea of during the war, don't sit there in the pub saying, you know, oh, I've heard the Germans are going to do this or God knows what. You know, it's like during the war, people were taught to keep sensitive information to themselves in order to defeat Germany. It's a very dramatic historic parallel, but there you go. Now, let's talk about a few other things. I was part of a party a few days ago, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And I wanted to say something that's really simple at the party that I introduced, which I'd recommend all of you do. I don't know if you've got this problem, but when I throw a party at home, I spend the whole evening fixing people's drinks. So when they arrive, they're, oh, what would you like to drink? And then you go and get their drinks. And then when the party's full, you are um, then having to top them up he's like oh you need another beer let me go and get you a beer so i introduced a strict rule which is the guests are going to get their own drinks so it's perfect because it's january and it's very cold in london at the moment so the beer was outside we've got a little patio so the beer was outside on the patio lucky to have a patio you're welcome and the beer and the, the white wine and the we had sparkling wine and white wine it was nice it was all outside all day so it meant it, it was like three degrees outside so it was wonderfully chilled and all, especially blokes who like beer and they would come in and they go so nice to see you beers outside help yourself and the funny thing is the guests love that they love to help themselves red wine on the table grab a glass white wine outside there's ice in the freezer fix your own drinks Nobody minds. Nobody's cross about it. And it meant that I did not fix a single drink that evening. Beautiful. Beautiful. And the guests love it because they have agency. You tell a guy the beers are outside and off he goes. He's, he is so happy. He's so happy to go and organise his own beer. And he go, goes out there and he sees a little choice of beers. And, oh, they've got some San Miguel there. I'll come back from a Cronenberg later. And I'm going to go from San Miguel to Cronenberg. That's lovely. Then a glass of red wine. <laughs> So there you go. And you do not spend all evening serving people. The other thing is with the food, you've got to keep it so simple, so simple. My partner had set up this um, dish, which was little cherry tomatoes with a piece of mozzarella and then a leaf of basil. And what you would have to do is take one of those wooden sticks and push it through the whole thing. So it's like a whole cocktail stick comprising the cheese, the single tomato and the bit of basil. And you had to do like you had to cut up the mozzarella and put them each one individually. Now, it takes a second for it to go in the mouth and be eaten, but it's taken me ages per tomato just to stab this so i just said i'm not doing that i went on strike so i'm not doing this fiddly what i believe in for parties when it comes to food is you you just you take a variety of cheeses out you just leave them on a table right a cheese board just a big old square of cheddar a lovely round camembert Maybe some red Leicester, which I quite like. It's kind of got a bit more, I don't know, what can I say? It's not as strong as cheddar, but it's still got its own character. I like that orange color and Stilton or whatever, but just a cheese board. And then you just have three or four baguettes just ready to go with a knife and a cutting board. And again, the guests help themselves. Cheese board on the table, help yourself. There's bread, help yourself. They love it. They, they are so happy to look after themselves get a few dips. That's my ideal party. Really simple. So simple. And the easy stuff really works very well. Um, Party food. Beers outside. Help yourself. We'll do a special on dinner parties very soon because I'm planning a dinner party and I'll tell you all my views on that very shortly. Um, product of the week is... A long time ago, I told you about the Filler Shave. I think it was a 9000 series, which is an excellent razor. Well, my son, he's got one and I've got one. He's lost his. So he's taken mine to university with him. 
So I'm now back to my crappy old battery operated one. So this is a filler shave. In case you're listening, let me just tell you what, let me just fix the camera here because there you go. Um, this filler shave is battery operated. So it's not like the lovely rechargeable one, which I have, but which has been taken away from me. And this one is, it only has two round things, not one whatever you call them. You know, those sort of spinning circles on the top of a razor. I think they're called, what are they called? Hmm, a razor, electric razor. They're round, the blades spin around inside them. What would you call them? Anyway, it's funny because Although the one that's been taken away from me was very premium, cost over a hundred pounds, this thing was like 15 quid, it's battery operated. It's nearly as good, it's nearly as good. So that's today's product of the day is the, are they foil? I think they're a foil, twin foil Philips electric razor. I'm looking for a code for you in case you want to look it up. PQ206, I think. Anyway, all you've got to do is Google Philips battery operated razor um, with two heads. It's a head. That's what it is. It's a twin head, not a triple because Philips invented the three heads and this one has got two, which makes it more compact. And like I say, it's nearly as good as the posh one. I mean, it's the result is the same. It just takes a little bit longer. More than happy with it, a fraction of the price. So there you go, sometimes the cheap stuff is just as good. Shall I look up what it's called? Uh, Philips Twin Head, isn't it? Philips Twin Head Shaver. There you go. Boots are selling it for $18.99. And they're calling it, Boots is a British chemist, like a pharmacy. Come on guys, haven't got all day. And they're calling it Philips Men Electric Cordless Travel Shaver. Yes, PQ206 slash 18. Lovely bit of kit. Clean shave for confidence. The Philips PQ206 electric shaver combines the close cut shaving system with independently floating heads. You can be confident you will look your best every day. Marvelous, I've got no problem with it. Independently floating heads, self-sharpening blades, give long lasting, um, self-sharpening blades give long lasting, they've not finished that sentence, give long lasting for up to two years. Oh, someone sacked the writer. I met a guy once whose job it was to write instruction manuals. He was an English teacher. He made more money writing instruction manuals than he did teaching. Ease of use, charging, battery operation. There's something quite old school about just a battery operated device, isn't there? Everything is lithium iron now, which is fine, but it's built in obsolescence, isn't it? That means that it can't last forever. So like my electric toothbrush is lithium iron. Well, that's fine. Well, when the battery finally dies, which they eventually do, it's obsolete. Whereas actually, and it's the same with my posh electric razor, but with this Philips battery operated one, I will be able to take the batteries out and replace them forever. Much better. There you go. Who knew? Now, what else before I let you go? Um, try and network if you can. I had a lovely lunch with somebody in my industry this week. Great company and just really nice to compare notes about what we do and the world in which we work. And career wise, it, it can never hurt to build up that network of contacts. It can be very useful. So maybe once a week, try to network, reaching out to someone, send them an email, perhaps walk over to a different department, say hi. But just if you have a chance, to socialize with people in your industry, but who are not direct colleagues, 
it's a great move. And then you go for a beer or you go for a coffee with someone that's in your industry and they go, oh, have you heard there's a job going at our place? You'd be perfect for it. And then bang, away you go. So it's just, it's a really nice thing to do and it's just enjoyable. And it's also like building your social life and building your social contacts as well. Because, you know, I work on the friendship model when it comes to colleagues which is my colleagues are my friends my friends are my colleagues I just the way I work is that if I work with someone they become my friend as a general rule I might not socialize with them but we are friendly and it is like a friendship it's a productive professional friendship um but yeah you never know you network with people and you'll you're more likely to have make new friends with people who are in the same industry as you because they've been attracted to the same line of work that you have, which means you've got a lot in common and you might have a similar makeup, a certain personality type. So if you're in IT and you network with other IT people, they're probably like-minded because they're in IT, they like computers and so do you. That's just a brilliant starting point for a good relationship. So you can do that. It's a lovely thing. It is a lovely thing. It's like when I was, when I became a father and um, our son went to primary school and it even started at nursery actually, where I became really good friends with the parents of the other kids that went to the primary school. And the reason why is because we've all got kids the same age and we've therefore, we're going through the same stuff with a lot in common, great basis for friendship. NCT, this is like the course you can go on before having a baby, which teaches you about the birth and all the rest of it. And it prepares you for parenthood. Uh, we, we made good friends with people on the NCT class. Why? Well, because they were expecting a baby and so were we. And there's a lot of shared experience there. And that bonds you, that brings you closer. And I became closer to a lot of these strangers who just happened to be having a baby at the same time than friends I'd been to university with, whose lives we're so different now and it's very natural and you can't you can't you know stop that from happening it is what it is um right i think and tying in with that by the way an excellent thing to do that i can really recommend in terms of these networks you can also help each other and i go to the gym and i'm always chatting with a guy at the gym and we're always talking about weight loss he wants to lose weight it's funny he's got a high muscle mass but considers himself to be a little overweight and he wants to lose weight i'm lean i'm slim but i'd like to have more muscle mass so we've got the opposite challenge and so he whatsapp me and said do you mind if um, i use you as like my motivation buddy i'm like yeah sure so i've been you know i'm going to be texting him every day he's going to let me know how many carbs he's had every day because he wants to get those carbohydrates down you must listen to the low carb episode it's a tremendous way of losing weight it's all about keeping insulin low. Do check out that episode. Um, but WhatsApp's really good because you can create these groups. So we've got lots of little, you know, I've got WhatsApp groups for friends, for colleagues, uh, family members. And that network can really grow. I was on a reality show called The Jump and there's still a WhatsApp group for that knocking around somewhere. And if I want to reach out to those people, I can just go back on the group and say, hey, and then bang, they all get the new message. It's a lovely thing. That ties in with networking. So the digital universe makes it very easy to network. And I would recommend it. Is that it? I think so. I will just leave you with one last practical tip. I have to process a lot of information for my job. And I'm always reading newspapers. And I'm on social media. And I'm just trying to gather up as much material as I can get my hands on. But if I see a story in the paper or if I see a tweet, I don't have time to like write down every bit of information. And I don't want to email myself everything because that takes a while and then I'm never going to read those emails. So if I see an article in the paper or a tweet or an Instagram post or anything else, I screenshot it on my phone. So if you've got an iPhone, that would be like the power button and the volume button at the same time it just makes it makes it it literally photographs what was it. so that's really good um and i do that and i so i have millions of screenshots and then what i do when i'm less busy is i fire up my phone 
and I just go through the screenshots and it reminds me of what I wanted to see. And it's like quicker than reading a whole article because I've just screenshotted part of the article. And if I want to read the rest of it, then I can go online and search it. But all very often it's just, I'll read the article and then I screenshot a part of the article and it's an aid memoir to remind myself that, yeah, that was an interesting angle. So it's a lovely thing. So screenshotting stuff on your phone is really, really handy. The great way of, I mean, even let's say you're on your phone and just an advert for a movie that pops up that you want to see, just screenshot that. And then later when you're going through your photographs, you'll be like, oh yeah, that's that movie I want to see. Otherwise you would have forgotten because you can't remember everything. Remember a couple of weeks ago, I talked about the excellent American psychologist, Dr. Phil, and he said, you never have enough time. And he's absolutely right. You never have enough time. And, but also you have to be realistic. You're busy. You've got a lot on. You need things to be as efficient and easy as possible. So there you go. Um, I'd like you to go and have a wonderful week. Please try to upcycle or find the value in anything you're about to throw away. And can you give it an extra second life? Stand up for what you think is right, fearlessly. The power of the screenshot. Keep parties simple. All your guests want is alcohol and snacks. Don't run out of food at a party, by the way, or booze. Doesn't matter how bad the food is, doesn't matter how bad the booze is, they will tolerate it. What you can't do is run out. Because parties, what you do with parties, that's when you pretend to be a billionaire. That's the but parties is like the illusion that we're all, you know, these sort of uh, amazingly profligate, wealthy aristocrats. That's what you do. It's, it's, you know, party is like a moment of plenty, isn't it? It's like Christmas, the Christmas dinner, it's just f unending flow of food and drink. And, you know, a lot of people cannot really afford that. But Christmas day, birthdays, you splash the cash and you live the dream. That's what it's all about. It's mainly about not running, running out of stuff. If you're throwing a dinner party, you do not run out of roast potatoes. It is a criminal offence to run out of roast potatoes. I was at a party not that long ago. They ran out of roast potatoes. Catastrophe. Couldn't have been worse. It didn't just destroy my day. It destroyed my, my week slash month. Um, it's been lovely to have your company. I will catch up with you very soon. Go and have a great week. And don't be thinking about how hard things are. Okay. Just think to yourself, it's fine. It's easy. I've got this. And you know what? You most certainly do. See you next time. Have a great week. Goodbye. <laughs>